Alright, so today I want to give a review of the 2019 Husqvarna 701 Supermoto. Uh, before I get into the review, I'm just going to list the modifications that I've done to the bike. I got a seat concept seat, uh, wings exhaust, and wings carbon fiber exhaust guard, Rottweiler tail tidy, power commander 5 with advanced ignition timing map from Rottweiler, Rottweiler intake, and a Rottweiler block off plate. So I'll start by addressing a bunch of items individually uh, and I'll end with a basic summary which captures more of the overall feeling that I experienced while riding the bike. So first on the list is power. Uh, coming from my last bike which was a 2018 Yamaha MT-10. Uh, this Husqvarna is incredibly smooth. Um, there's almost no jerkiness or, or on and off throttle leg. Uh, the bike can get second gear power wheelies, uh, and if you're good at wheelies, you can definitely get it up in third. I think people can get it up in most of the gears. Uh, so, And more than enough power for the highway. I regularly cruise at about 90, and the bike has no problem with this at all. Um, it isn't really a highway bike, and you wouldn't necessarily want to do long road trips with it just because of the wind blast factor, but the bike will do it pretty, pretty well for uh, basically being a dirt bike for the street. Uh, there's more than enough power to rip around just slow moving cars and uh, the, the power to weight ratio is really good. And after I added the Rottweiler intake uh, and the Power Commander, it really just like it opened the bike up, it just made it rip. Uh, it was already a joy to ride and now it's just even more so. And coming from the, the 1000cc monster, the, the MT-10, I kind of thought I'd missed the power but I really don't miss it at all. I mean, if, if the MT-10 was like a bull, the Husqvarna is like a falcon. It's the best comparison I could say. So number two is comfort and ergonomics. I stand about six foot one and weigh 155 pounds. This bike is pretty much as close to perfect as I've seen for my height and weight. Uh, just right off the, off the factory floor. It's really light and nimble. It's a very upright position. And, uh, you know, even when compared to my previous upright bikes, it's, uh, it's, it's really, um, you know, like compared to the Yamaha MT-10 and the Yamaha FJ09, it almost feels bizarre at first, uh, like you're, you're riding a BMX bike or something. Uh, because if you're sitting far enough up on the seat, it really, it kind of allows for almost perfect posture. Uh, and because there's so much less effort involved than riding a sport bike, you can spend all day on it. And the, the stock seat, it was a bit firm, so I went with the Seat Concepts Comfort Seat, which really just lets me ride all day with, uh, with minimal discomfort, if any. Uh, the 701 owners of 2016 had some complaints about the vibrations coming through the foot pegs in the seat and the handlebars. So what Husqvarna did for 2017, uh, they answered the complaint by adding an extra counterbalancer in the motor, uh, which really smoothed things out. And I find it to be very smooth for a 700cc single. And there's still some vibrations, but it's, it's pretty damn good. Uh, I ride all day without having any issues like arm numbness or anything like that. So number four on the list is handling. I bought this bike to handle the really tight, twisty coastal roads for Northern California. Uh, Route 1 going north from San Francisco, it's just a motorcyclist dream. It's endless miles of constant twisties with a, a beautiful ocean view. Uh, but on a sport bike or heavier machine, it can get a bit tiring, especially if you're more of an aggressive rider like I am. So the Husqvarna absolutely nails the tight twisting roads. I mean, it feels like it's on rails and uh, approaching the corners, you don't have to lean off the bike. You just counter steer into the turns, maintain an upright position, uh, upright body position. It just feels really amazing. And especially with the Conti Attack Supermoto tires, which come standard on the bike, uh, the grip is really phenomenal. They do advertise that uh, they put something on there called a traction skin or, or some technology that apparently allows the tires to be completely rideable in an aggressive ride right off the factory floor. Like, they're, they're, like you don't have to break them in. Uh, that is false. You should break in all of your tires. These are no exception, especially when they're cold and new. I've slipped with them. So just break them in like normal. But anyway, when they are broken in, 
The grip is phenomenal. I've never felt a loss in traction. You can get a little bit of a slide, but it's a controlled slide. Uh, you will burn through these tires quickly, but if your goal is maximum grip and just like a big smile on your face, I really recommend the Conti Attack Supermoto tires. And the bike is also remarkably stable at high speeds, even without a steering dampener. I never put a dampener on there. I don't really feel like it needs it. Uh, just make sure you set the suspension according to your weight. I've set it up too hard and gotten some head shake, but <clears throat> I just like to keep it at standard. I've taken the bike up to about 125 miles an hour on the highway with sweeping turns and no noticeable head shake or instability. It's just such a good chassis. For brakes, they initially worked great, but I crashed the bike twice and both times snapped off the front brake lever, which also caused something to go wrong in, uh, in, in the line, which resulted in a spongy front brake, which is almost non-operable at this point. My understanding is that the stock front brake starts to have problems with a lot of these bikes, and many people have been replacing with a Brembo RC15, which is a single caliper sort of race lever. It's supposed to be really good and that's going to be my next upgrade. Prior to the crashes, I thought the brakes had great bite. Uh, there's also ABS, which I keep on for the street. Some people have complained that the ABS is too intrusive, but coming from the MT-10, which felt like you were going over rumble strips when the ABS engaged, I didn't find the Husky's ABS to be intrusive at all, and I don't need to be backing it into turns on the street. So everything's personal preference. You'll just have to see for yourself. Uh, number five, I put sound on the list of review items. So uh, initially the complaint with this bike from other reviewers is that it sounds like a lawnmower. It's really quiet stock. And I don't entirely agree, but I don't think it's that far off. Uh, it is very quiet with stock and definitely it sounds a bit timid. Uh, so the wings exhaust that I put on there adds that nice four stroke bite, that sort of bark or the, the brop. With the baffle in, it's quieter for around town, but when you get the RPMs up, it just really gets nice and loud. So it's, it's perfect for me. Uh, number six on the agenda is reliability. I've ridden this bike for 6,500 miles, and I've ridden it extremely hard. Uh, as I've stated earlier, the, the front brakes are the only thing that's been any issue so far. Otherwise, I've kept standard maintenance schedule, uh, oil change every 3,000 miles or, or even uh, less and the bike's been a trooper. So my understanding of these bikes is that the 690 models weren't very long lasting, but I think with the new counterbalancer to decrease the vibrations, I would uh, imagine that this, this smoother and less vibey engine will be more prone to lasting longer, but uh, who knows, it's just uh, my thought on that. A known issue on the bike besides the front brakes is the clutch slave cylinder. Uh, my understanding is that you don't want this to fail while you're riding. It can be extremely inconvenient or dangerous if you're not an experienced rider. So I'm replacing mine with the Oberon, which a lot of other 701 owners have done. So in summary, if you're thinking about buying this bike, I would just go take it for a test ride. Uh, I would just buy it, honestly. I bought the bike without even test driving it. I, I just, I read enough reviews and I kind of knew what I was looking for. I really don't think you'll be disappointed. And uh, yeah, when you do buy it, let me know how it goes. I'd love to hear your experience with this bike. Uh, it's been just amazing for me. So anyway, thanks for listening to this review. I hope it was helpful and uh, have a good day.